Greetings, everybody. So in the past, I have spoken extensively about loquats. I have had loquats in Hong Kong, in Mexico, in Africa, in Portugal. I have cooked with loquats. I've made tea using the loquat leaves. I've covered the loquat liqueur that is consumed in Madagascar. I have spoken a lot about loquats. Well, today I have something that is even more interesting. I have a different species of loquat, this little guy right here. This is the bronze loquat. And the bronze loquat, as you can see, uh, looks quite a bit different than the loquats I've had in the past. It is maybe a similar uh, shape. I guess it's got some similar features like that little thing over there and that little thing over there. The bronze loquat, as you can see, has a reddish color and you may think that, hey, that makes sense, bronze loquat. That is a loquat that is bronze. That's why it's called that. Uh, nope, no, I don't think so. The reason why this is called bronze loquat is because the tree that this grows from has uh, leaves that when they grow initially they point straight to the sky and they are bronze and then as they get older they turn green so because of that it, it looks really cool <laughs> it looks really cool and this is very popular as an ornamental it's something that sometimes is grown as a street tree even you'll see it like grown on the side of the road as landscaping one thing that it is not commonly used for uh, is the fruit People don't eat the fruit. In fact, if you look online, you will find many, many resources saying, do not eat the bronze loquat. The bronze loquat is inedible. And uh, that I was not able to find any website in English that said that the bronze loquat is edible. Slawik over at the Santa Cruz Rare Fruit Growers uh, sent this to me. And uh, when he sent it to me, I looked it up and I was uh, surprised to see that this is considered inedible. Now, most people hearing that a fruit is inedible would just call it a day and not eat it, assume that the person that gave it to them is trying to kill them. Well, not me. No, I decided to really dig deep on this fruit and find out if I can eat it or not. So what I did is I looked everywhere, and everywhere that I looked in English said that this is inedible, but it didn't say why it's inedible. And that got me thinking, why would this be inedible? Loquats, you know, regular loquats, they do have seeds, and those seeds do contain a little bit of cyanide. So you can't eat a whole bunch of loquat seeds. But I can't see why this would have that issue like in the fruit. Like maybe, but I went further than that. The bronze loquat is not native to the US. It is native to China, Vietnam, and Taiwan. And in China, this has the name Taiwanese loquat. So I found the characters for that, the Chinese characters for Taiwanese loquat, and I searched online. And I found a whole bunch of Chinese websites talking about this, and when they're talking about this, they say, edible. This is native to China. People know about it in China. They have a long history of this fruit in China. So I figure they probably know more about this than uh, anyone in the US who's writing a page on this in English. However, they do say that it's not as good because it's small and doesn't have a whole lot of flesh. So I think that's why this gets the label of inedible on English websites because it is something that is maybe not so easy to eat, but it is something that you can eat as far as I know. So uh, I'm not gonna put this as an endorsement, like everyone go eat a whole bunch of these. Maybe there's some reason that you shouldn't, but I think it's fine. In my opinion, it's probably fine. Let's get into it. First, I'm gonna peel the skin of this. So you can eat loquat skin, but it's not my favorite sort of thing. It's, it can be kind of tough. So I'm assuming that this will be a better experience if I peel it. But as you can see, the skin on it is quite thin and it also is pretty easy to peel. You know, on the outside, these things look 
you know, more like a crab apple to me than a loquat. But when you peel it, you can see it does look quite similar to a, a loquat, just obviously a lot smaller. And if I break this open, you can see that there are some rather large seeds inside. There's one, and two. Once you take the seeds out and the skin off, uh, also I should get rid of this little stem piece, you're not left with a whole lot, but uh, that is okay. Let's see what they taste like. Not remarkable, but they're not bad. They don't taste poisonous. They don't taste bitter. Uh, they just taste sweet. They don't have a strong flavor, but they have um, like a little pop of sugar to them. I say that the, the sweetness on that is around the same uh, as an apple. There's no tartness to it. Maybe just like a little bit, like faintly. And the flavor of that is like apple. It's got an apple flavor. Uh, the texture of it is a little bit like loquat, where it's got this very uh, refreshing, juicy sort of sort of flavor to it. Um, let me try another one. That one was very red, but some of them are a little bit more yellow. This one I think is like a little bit underripe, so maybe it'll be a little sour, and because of that, it might have more flavor. Peel it, pop out the seeds, pop off the stem. It's not difficult to take the seeds and skin off, but because it's so small, it's a little, you know, I don't know, seems a little bit excessive for such a small amount of fruit. Ooh, I'm not sure if that one is more ripe or less ripe because it, there's no tartness to it and it's sweeter. That has a sweetness of uh, maybe like a seven out of ten, and the flavor is um, is better. It's got that apple taste, but uh, maybe a little bit of a spicy edge to it, like a touch of like cinnamon or something, something like that. I'm curious what's going to happen if I take one of these and just put it in my mouth whole. So let's do that next. I want to get this little guy off the bottom though. That's uh, that's not going to be a fun time because it is a little annoying to peel this and take the seeds out, so maybe you don't need to. Nope, you do not need to peel those. That skin tastes fine, and the texture of that skin, it's got like a little, little chew to it. It's kind of nice. I, I think it's better not to peel those, and um, it's easy enough to spit those seeds out, uh, and the skin doesn't have a different sort of flavor or a negative flavor to it. It tastes the same. Sweet, spicy apple taste. You know what? These are good. This is something that I could see just like eating as a snack out of hand. Be a good like trail snack. If you see this like while you're like walking around outside, it would be a good one to make something out of because the flavor of this is good. You could use it in uh, the same way you use an apple. Make like an applesauce out of these or something. I think. I think. I will put a disclaimer here anyway. I think this is probably fine to eat, but there isn't a lot of information about it. You know, in China, people say you can eat it. Here in the US, people say you can't. Uh, I think I would go with China on this one because that does taste like something that is edible. This is something that should probably get studied in a lab. I, I feel like somebody can probably take these apart and see just how much cyanide or whatever is in this fruit. Because as it is, tastes like it's okay. Maybe it would be troublesome like if you eat a whole bunch of them. Maybe it's not good for people who have like a sensitivity to certain sorts of compounds. I don't know. There's not a whole lot of information about this, but um, from what I could tell, I don't think Slawik was trying to kill me. I think this is something that you can eat. So uh, do your own research on it. But uh, either way, it is something to look into. 
I think that is about it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, check out the uh, Santa Cruz Rare Fruit Growers for more information about what they're doing. They have seeds available of this, I believe, and they do tours and lectures and stuff. So check that out, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye. I would like to give a big shout out to Smarter Every Day, Wootbot, JMac, and Schoolbird. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. This is how I can afford to do all the things that I'm doing on this channel, so it's a big help. Thank you so much, guys. And anyone else watching who would like to support the channel and get some cool stuff in return, uh, click the link in the description below. Another thing that you can do is buy a t-shirt. I've got them for sale over on my website, which I've linked in the description below as well. Thank you so much, everybody. See you next time.